welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the setup of our react application in our monstack doctor appointment booking application so here you can see in my local disk f in the Shea healthy folder i am going to create our react application so this is my root folder that that means our project name Shea healthy so here i am going to create a new react application so you can choose the normal uh, windows terminal or the vs code terminal so i am going to open this folder in the visual studio code because anyhow we are going to write the code in the vs code only so let me open visual studio code so i am going to close everything yeah here you can see the folder is empty now so we don't have any files and nested folders in this so this is the root folder and right now it is empty now in this i am going to create the react application with the name client so npx create hyphen react hyphen app followed by the application name client because this is a monstack application we are going to name our front end as client and back end as our server so oh sorry cli ent so it will create a new react application with the name client in the she healthy folder so it will take some time depending upon our system as well as the internet performance so until then please wait all right guys so our react application has been created successfully here you can see we got the client folder in the she healthy so if i expand i will get all the react uh, by default folders and files so now to run this application i'll be navigating into this client folder so cd client now i'm in the client folder so i'll execute this application by using the command npm start so i got the message starting the development server so it might take a while to start the server so by default it will run in the localhost 3000 port so if the port is busy with the other applications so it will ask us to run our react application in a new port so that means 3001 or 3002 so i don't have any applications in the 3000 port right now so i think it will execute in the localhost 3000 only yeah here you can see you can now view client in the browser local localhost 3000 so if i click on this link it will open in the chrome with the localhost 3000 port here you can see i got the default output for the react application so this is the default output for every new react application so to remove or to get rid of all the default stuff first of all you have to expand the src folder in the client here you can see this is the src and in this src let's open the app.js and get rid of all the default stuff i'll just put one simple h1 text with our project title she healthy yeah here you can see now we don't have any default stuff in the app.js we have only one h1 text that is our project title now i will clean up some of the code in the front end that means our react so first of all let's remove all the unused imports we do we are not using these import statements let's remove this and remove this uh, app.css as well as the uh, logo.svg yeah now let's go to the public index.html so let's clean up all the commented code so we will keep as simple as possible yeah so just change the title uh, from react app to our application so she healthy she healthy and that's all here you can see the application name got changed successfully and we don't have any errors after deleting the unused files so we are good now so in the next lecture we are going to work on the backend setup thank you welcome back guys in the last lecture we have completed the setup of our react application that means our front end now in this lecture we are going to work on the back end so let's close all the files in the client so in this root folder only we are going to create the backend application so i'm going to split the terminal into two terminals 
the first one is about the front end and second one is about the back end so in this back end terminal first i am going to initialize the npm npm in it so it will create a package.json file so it will ask some basic questions for all the questions just press the enter yeah here you can see we got the package.json file now i am going to install some of the dependencies in the back end with the express npm i express mongoose and uh, json web token for the authentication purpose and also dot env dot env so if you require any further modules we will install in the later so just press enter so express is our framework mongoose is for the database purpose json web token is for handling the authentication tokens and dot env for the storing uh, encrypted values not encrypted values secured values so here you can see we got the node modules in the back end also if you open the package.json we could able to see all the installed dependencies in the back end so dot env express json web token and mongoose so now uh, we need to install the node mon so npm i node mon so with the help of node mon we can restart the server by just pressing the control s so every time we need not to write the npm start our node server to start our node mon you just need to press the control s so the backend server will automatically restart it yeah so now let's create the entry point of our backend that is server.js server dot js so in this i am going to create the server using the express so first i am going to write the import statement for the express const express is equal to require express then i am going to write const app is equal to express so then i will be writing port const port is equal to process dot env dot port or 5000 because 3000 port is already busy with the front end so we have to choose the 5000 now we have to listen to this port using the app dot listen method so in the app dot listen method the first method will be that means the first parameter will be port and the second parameter will be the callback function that's all we need from the server dot js so now I am going to write nodemon server. So here you can see I got the output listening on port 5000. Now I am going to change the text in the console log to check the nodemon whether it is restarting automatically or not. Node server started at port number control s here you can see we got the output node server started at port 5000 so that means our node.js and express.js servers are working fine with the nodemon client so in the next lecture we are going to work on the mongodb setup as well as the node.js and mongodb connection thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the mongodb setup so first of all let's open google and navigate to the mongodb atlas website mongodb atlas so there you have to create an account and you have to create a database then you will get the connection url that you have to add in our code base so here you can see this is the mongodb atlas official website you just need to click on the sign in if you already have the account else you have to create it so i already have my account so i am going to log in with my google credentials only i'll just click on this Yeah, it will take us to the dashboard of the mongodb atlas which is for the logged in user interface so here you can see this is the logged in user interface 
so here you will get the list of databases and the pricing all those things so you need not to pay any amount for the normal usage so if you want to build an application for an enterprise level that uh, you have to pay so right now we don't have to do that so here in this you just need to click on this browse collections so i just clicked on this now i'll be navigating to the list of databases that i have already created here you can see these are the list of databases that I have already created I am using. Now to create a new database you just need to click on this create database button. Here you have to enter the database name. I just write Shea Healthy Udemy. And by default I am going to create a collection name users. Anyhow we require this users and create. retrieving list of databases so if i scroll down here you can see this is my project shea healthy so i got the users we have only one collection without any documents so this is our database and this is our collection name so how to add this database in our code base that means how to connect this database using our node.js so it is very simple so if you go to the overview you will be having this connect button here just click on the last one so not the first two last one connect using mongodb compass here you will get the connection url so if you see the connection url the first one will be the normal their uh, security purpose things and here you will be having two important things the first one will be the username username they will provide and the second one will be the password so you have to create a user in the database axis that password you have to add it here then only it will work so now just copy this now i am going to create dot env file and here i'll just write the variable name mongo url is equal to i'll just paste it here so i'm going to enter my password pr yeah so now at the last here you can see we could able to see this test right this is our database name so just remove this uh, test and add your database name so in my case the database name will be shea healthy udemy this is my database name so here we have directly added the dot env file and we have added this variable also but it will not work until unless you install the dot env extension so just go and install the dot env okay so let me open dot env npm so we will be having some of the configuration steps for this dot env so just copy this uh, command and paste it here npmi.env yeah it got installed successfully now you just need to import that dot env uh, configuration in the server.js let's see what is the statement for the import purpose yeah so this is the statement process.env copy and put it here require dot env config now i'm going to restart the server nodemon server yeah so here to test whether the process variables working fine or not that means the variables which are present in the dot env working fine or not i am going to print these in the server.js so here i'll just write console.log process dot env dot mongo underscore url control s here you can see we got the text from the process dot env file so we are not using this mongo url anywhere in our code base we are using only in the env so we should not hard code these kind of values in the code level we have to keep all the values in the process dot env only so this is the secured mechanism now let's get rid of this console statement so now we have the mongo connection url and the mongo uh, connection 
setup ready so now we have to open that mongo connection in the mongodb compass because every time we cannot open the browser and see the output where the collections are added documents are added all those things so it's very a uh, long process so that's the reason i am going to use one of the software like mongodb compass so these uh, you can run it in your local machine by using the connection url you will connect to the server so mongodb compass so here you just need to add the connection url or oh, not this go to the env so exactly this add it here and click on the connect so it will open the same database in the mongodb compass so which you can access in your local machine yeah here you can see i got my instance so if i open this shay healthy udemy where it is yeah shay healthy udemy i got the users so now i need not to open the mongodb all those things every time in the browser so i can get it of this now as well as there's npm also so by this we have completed the mongodb setup not connection so we just completed the mongodb setup in the database as well as the mongodb compass so in the next lecture we'll be working on the connection between mongodb as well as the node.js thank you welcome back guys in the last lecture we have completed the setup of our mongodb database so now in this lecture we are going to work on the mongodb and uh, node.js connection using the mongoose package so we have already installed the mongoose package while setting the backend so if i open the package.json i'll be having this uh, mongoose so with the help of this package only we are going to work on the connection between node.js and mongodb database so let's close everything and create a new folder in the root that is config not config it's config i'm going to rename it config so in this config i'm going to write db config db config dot js so here first i'm going to write const mongoose is equal to require mongoose so now const connect is equal to mongoose dot connect so here the parameter will be process dot env dot mongo url so this is the uh, parameter for the mongo mongoose connect then you have to write const connection connection is equal to mongoose dot connection const connection is equal to mongoose dot connection so you can get rid of this const connect also we are not using that variable anywhere so now we got the connection object so we have to verify whether this connection is successful or not how we can verify so for that mongoose will provide a method called as the on so connection dot on connection dot on so the parameter will be connected so connected parameter will be for the happy path that means if our connection is successful so we are going to print the response in the console like console.log mongodb is connected so if it is connected and we have the second one oh sorry connection dot on error so if you are having any error in the url or something like internet all those things it will throw the error error in mongodb connection or if you want to print the error you just need to print the error directly in the console that's all so first we are going to connect to the mongodb connection url then we are going to create the connection object then we are going to verify that connection using two methods connected and error now we have to export this module dot exports is equal to mongoose that's all 
so this is the code snippet for the mongodb as well as the node.js connection so now to test this whether our connection is successful or not you just need to import this file we need not to call any function in this file you just need to import this file in the entry point of our backend that means server.js so let's go to the server.js after the dot env i am going to write const db config is equal to require dot slash config slash db config so i am going to press the control s so it will execute the code in the db config dot js by default because we don't have any functions we have written the normal statements so it will execute whenever the file is imported automatically control s so node server started at port 5000 here you can see we got the success response mongodb is connected so we have to test the error scenarios also every time we cannot go forward with the only positive scenarios sometimes we may have to test the error scenarios so here if you add any other url instead of process.env.mongo url if you add any like a b c d it will throw the error here you can see if we got the error because the url is invalid now i am going to put the normal one node server started at port 5000 mongodb is connected so if you change any message also it will work so instead of mongodb is connected mongodb connection is successful control s here you can see mongodb connection is successful so by this we have completed all our mon stack setup front end back end as well as the database so in the next section onwards we will be working on the authentication of our application thank you welcome back guys in the last section we have worked on the setup of our monstack doctor appointment booking application that means we have completed the front end back end as well as the database setup now in this section we are going to work on the authentication screens in the front end so we are not going to do anything with the back end in this section so first we will develop the login and registration screens then in the next section we will connect the back end so first of all i'll expand the src folder client src now in this src folder i am going to create two files the first one will be login.js oh sorry first we have to create the pages folder right so i am going to create a new folder called as pages and i am going to have this file login.js in the pages yeah so here i'll just create the functional component rfce login <coughs> then i am going to create a new file register.js <coughs> here also functional component register now uh, to render these two pages we must have the routes so now i am going to install the react router dom library in the front end as well as the and design so i'll just write npm install react router dom so this is for the routing purpose as well as uh, for the styling purpose we are going to use the entity components and to design so later we will install the required npm libraries like uh, axios all those things so first of all uh, these two are required to get started press enter <coughs> so if you don't know about the entity just open the google and type entity so you will be having the documentation with all the components details so let me connect to my net connection refresh yeah so just type ant design or ant d here you can see so you will be having the list of components if you click on the components at the left side you will be having the component names and at the center of the page you will be having the description as well as the component props all those things suppose if i select the button component here you can see I have the documentation how to use the button what is the code of the button what kind of props I can pass through this button all those things so need not to worry about the documentation and all the things so I will explain everything from scratch so you just need to have some brief idea about the what is entity how entity works 
so let's see the vs code yeah two packages has been installed successfully now i am going to restart the server npm start now i'm also going to add the bootstrap in this application so for the normal styling purpose that means margin padding flex all those things we are going to use the bootstrap cdn classes so every time we cannot go and write in the css files so if you have that much of time you can but i don't want to uh, waste your time by writing all the css functionalities so i'm going to use bootstrap for the normal styling so just write bootstrap cdn click on this first one if you scroll down you will be having this css only cdn link just copy this and paste it in the public index.html so here you have to paste it so we will test both entity and bootstrap in this lecture only so from the next lecture onwards we will be starting the login and registration pages so here you can see the server is getting restarted so these are the two libraries that we are going to use in the front end and to design for the components bootstrap for the classes so mostly we will be doing everything with the entity only so sometimes we may have to add the margin top margin left padding all those things so in that scenarios we will be using the bootstrap so i'll close both yeah here we should have the entity because we have to follow some documentation so if you click on this symbol uh here you can see this is the official and landing page of the entity so if you click on the get started you would be having the instructions how to import it in the react so if you scroll down first you will be having the npm install entity and then you will be having the uh import that means for every component you have to write the import statement and for the styling you just need to import this line so you need not to import this line in all the pages where you use entity component so you can import only in the app.js so it will be imported globally so i think the application got restarted successfully so first i will test the entity components then we will test the bootstrap classes so let me uh, import this css in the app.js go to the app.js yeah i have written import statement from the entity now let's go and uh, create one component so click on the components i'll create button so i want this primary button so to see the code of this primary button you just need to click on this code symbol here you can see so this is the primary button code so it is almost similar to material ui only you just need to import the component and you have to use it in the render content so just copy this content and paste it in the underneath of the h1 text and you have to import this button import button from entity so here we don't have the react import statement let me import that import react from react control s now it is getting compiled let me check here you can see it got compiled successfully we got an error from the entity we can ignore it i'll resolve it later so this is related to the webpack so it won't impact our application any time so if i open the app here you can see we got the output and this is the button from the entity so now let's try to have the bootstrap classes so for this button only i am going to have the bootstrap so i'll just wrap this button inside a div or for the app also i can apply so i'll just apply padding 5 p5 is nothing but padding 50 from all the sides based on the bootstrap control s here you can see i got the padding so now we have both entity as well as the bootstrap so we have to design the components using the entity we have to write the normal styling using the bootstrap sometimes we may have to override the entity also suppose if you want to override this button color you just need to click on this button and you have to inspect it 
not only this button if you want to override any entity component you have to inspect and you have to find the particular class name of that button then only we could able to override it so i will explain now itself so here you can see the class name of this button is ant btn and ant btn primary so i will copy this ant btn primary and i'll go to the index.css where is it yeah so here i'll just write okay and background color is equal to i'll write red and whenever you are overriding any entity component styling you just need to put the important now we should get the button in the red color here you can see we got the button in the red color so in the similar manner if you want to override any entity default styling you just have to find the class name and you have to write the styling by overriding the default entity styles so like this way we are going to build our components so in the next section not in the next section in the next lecture we are going to work on the registration form thank you